Hi everyone, it's Raziel Kane and I'm back with another tour review and today I'm gonna take a look at Golden Disc uh, Pterosaur. Of course, I put the box backwards or did I? Nope, we're good. And uh, this is a very plain looking box as you can see, but product shot is pretty good. He's the only figure that I actually picked up from the Golden Disc uh, collection because he's a mainline character and he should have been in a regular deluxe size kingdom box but they decided to put him there what's um not a, a, a piss off or something really upsetting but uh, i had to go on amazon.com to be able to pick it up because on amazon.ca it wasn't available i think the whole collection wasn't available and that happens a lot with a lot of the exclusive from asbro the amazon exclusive or actually amazon.com exclusives at least that's what I noticed, because if you look for the Golden Disc Collection, it didn't show up on Amazon.ca when it was announced. I don't know if afterwards it became available. I hope it did for my fellow Canadians, but I had to go through Amazon.com to pick it up. And I think it's really sad because this is a mainline character. So a lot of people are not gonna be able to get this. I didn't get the other Golden Disc uh, Collection because uh, I, I don't do uh, many, or actually I don't think, I have uh, more than two or three characters that are from other than the G1 show. I tried to stick to G1 characters for now because I want to complete that set first. I have a, one version of each character, as you know. So this is going to be a very uh, good review because I'm looking forward to that character a lot. Uh, I think Pterosaur was a good part of season one of the Transformers Beast Wars, of course. He didn't survive, spoiler, and um, I always... Um, question the uh, reason why they chose to have Starscream possess Waspinator instead of Pterosaur because they had a similar voice pattern. Air Commander Starscream of the Decepticon Battle Fleet! I figured it would have been a, a good mix but turned out to be a great episode with Waspinator as Starscream anyway. So it's, it's actually one of those classic episodes that really sunk me in the uh, Beast War show because there was a tie to G1 and I think other than uh, maybe a couple references here and there that were more general, like the Great War, that's something that's general, that could have been anything, but eventually it led to be the Great War between the Autobot and the Decepticons. So to have Starscream there was something that, you know, kind of hooked me in more. And then after that, you had, of course, Ravage and all those G1 references. And Season 3, or actually the end of Season 2 and the beginning of Season 3, it's all G1. So to me, Beast Wars is G1. Sorry I'm rambling, I'm just excited to see this figure, but before I do take a look at it, please check out my voice acting spotlight playlist because that's the main thing I do. And I'm actually really proud of my voice acting stuff. So if you want to take a look at the G1 voice actors uh, that made the cartoons great, uh, take a look at that playlist, thanks. He'll be flying anywhere out of the box as you can tell i already transformed it in robot mode because that's what i like to start with and um but we're gonna go through all this wonderful stuff so first the instruction i know you guys love when i present the instruction because you can pause it whenever you need to see what you need to see to be able to transform him so there you go all right take a look at the accessory i love the paint on this gun like it's really metal it looks fantastic bit of waffle of course but there's good details uh you know red plastic uh, painted uh metallic love it it's really good representation i wish he did come with the uh, the shoulder cannons that we've seen a couple times and i know that uh, Larkin's Lair did a uh, big, uh, a bigger gun for when he's all powered up on Energon, because obviously that enhanced the weapon as well, for some reason. I don't think so. Uh, but great episode anyway. Uh, other accessory, those little fins, that, I don't know why they just didn't peg them up. Like, why is this an accessory anyway? So you're gonna peg this up here and then of course on camera I can't get it right there you go. nope it's actually really tight 
So you're gonna plug it like this. Eh, it doesn't, uh, yeah, it's okay. And then, yeah, so as you can, you just saw, I have the same issue as anybody else with the wings. And uh, let me just pick that up. And I know there's some quick fixes for that, but it happens. Come on. It actually, it actually doesn't seem to be one thing to peg, but anyway. Uh, we'll finish the accessory first. Anyway, those fins are looking good, but they could have just been pegged in. The golden disc, I, I know Toy Hanks did decals for that to switch it up to uh, don't be stupid from Word Out and things like that, but I'm not going to change that because I thought this, there was actually two discs, right? On the show, there was this one, which is the Sound of the Earth, and there was the alien discs um, that were found uh, later on or uh, it's it's a little fuzzy but I know there was two discs but this one the sound of the earth where Beast War Megatron is actually able to you know change the, the course of time um, or actually control and see what change he's able to make I thought that was a, uh, a very powerful uh, weapon basically and uh, I like that that they included that uh, what was in the Voyager probe that golden disc that because that's actually a man-made thing and I thought that was a great way to incorporate still the human race in in that that uh, that, that show without having them as main characters. So I love the disc, and I'll show you later. It he actually kind of holds uh, with Beast War Megatron. Uh, the box we've already seen earlier. So again, great shots. There's no cameos. No hidden characters that you can see anywhere uh, sometimes there is but uh, good product shot and now the bot himself looks amazing um, aside from the issue with the wings where they don't uh, properly uh, clip it's really annoying but once it's displayed you know there's no problem so let's take a look uh, the paint is Great. My wife said that he's too red. She, of course, doesn't uh, know the character and the history, but when she looked at it, she's like, he's really plain. I hope Toy Hacks does something for him. Maybe they will. Who knows? Uh, but he looks very much like the show. I had to kiki the feet. I did. And, God damn it. I had to kiki the feet because uh, they're really loose, so he was always falling on his back. Uh, but uh, now that that's done, he's, uh, he's standing pretty good. Um, the uh, details, I'm not going to clip it back right now. The details on the face, he looks, that's the thing, his face, he looks like Starscream a little bit. Like he has that grin, he has that mischievous uh, dishonesty in his eyes. So Starscream could have possessed him and it would have made, at the time I thought it would have made more sense. But... Anyway, who am I to judge what the producer did? The details on the figure, the arms, uh, the Predacon logo, quite small. Uh, the details on the legs, like it, it's a very good robot mode. Uh, and of course, there's a huge back cable because of the transformation. And uh, But we've come to accept that. Because uh, in the show, it didn't show that much. And uh, let's take a look at the uh, articulation. The head would, if it wasn't for the chin or the angle and everything, it would rotate 360, but it doesn't. There's a bit of, well, there's no attitude. There's a bit of back and f like forward and backwards. The arms would, well, they do rotate 360. You have a articulation at the elbow and at the wrist because of transformation. There's no rotation of the hand. Same thing on the other side. There's, there would be a, uh, well, maybe, yeah, there is. There's a 360 at the waist, but you have to lift uh, the tail. You have a full rotation possible if you m manipulate the leg a little bit. It goes 360. At the knee, it goes 360. There's a wonderful more than 90 bend you also have, because of transformation, a shin bend forward 
like this. Looks okay. And the foot, again, because of transformation, does 360, so you have the back and forth and the ankle rocking. So that's pretty good. What else? I think that's it for articulation. Well, the wings and, you know, this huge kibble in the back. But it looks good. So I'm going to clip this back on. Hopefully it stays. I'm going to have to go look. I know there's a fix for this. Or I've seen videos claiming that there is a fix. Let's put the gun in. Give him that fantastic Terrazor look. And come on. Oh, I think I have the foot backwards. So in robot mode, you want to put the feet like this. So this looks good. All right, I think my camera, I need a new stand for my camera so that it, I have a uh, lower angle because of my current setup. Anyway, let's do some size comparison. Of course, I'm going to start with the goddess of my collection. She's my favorite Beast Wars character. And you can see the mold is, um, Terror Soar is a very heavy retool. There's a lot of differences in the transformation actually that I've noticed, like some part where like the head doesn't rotate to switch to the, e at the Peregrine Falcon head. There's no rotation there. You just flip the head back. Uh, there's, uh, there's no shoulder pads uh, on uh, Terrazor. And the head, um, you know, there's extra kibble on him. Uh, and of course the wings are completely different. And even the leg transformation, uh, it's not the same, well, actually, let's, let's show it, it's not the same, oh man, I think I have her legs backwards, yep, I completely do, let's fix that right now, huh, yeah, there you go, that looks better, but the, um, you can tell that there's a different, the, the, it's a completely different leg mold, uh, well, upper thigh mold. Because afterwards, the legs, they do look very similar. Uh, same, Yeah, it's the same thing. Now I look at it. So the shin are the same. Sorry. I'm just going to re-angle this a little better. Okay. So we're back. So you can tell the differences between uh, those two molds. They're the same height. and uh, But I think Terrasaur looks a little more menacing. And Urtri Starscream. He doesn't have the grinning face. Like if you take a closer look, this mold doesn't have the smile that we've come to love on Starscream. But you can, I don't know, there's a resemblance in, uh, of course, speech pattern, but also attitude a little bit. Maybe, you know, Pterosaur wasn't uh, much into betrayal, but uh, he did take a shot and actually was pretty successful. And with Beast War Megatron. And as you can see on this side, I've, you're actually able to kind of pinch the disc because of the uh, leathery uh, plastic that they've used, the soft uh, plastic. It holds a little bit. The only thing is I wish that he could hold this hand like upwards so that it you could see the spin in the disc like in the show. Uh, but uh, otherwise, um, I think the accessory is going to stay with Beast War Megatron because I it fits perfectly. And I like the scaling between those two figures. It, it really matches the, what was in the show. And now to take a look at the transformation. You've seen this before plenty of times because everybody did reviews of this guy already. And you've seen Air Razor. And uh, sometimes you might have seen Maximal Skywarp. So what we're going to do, what I like to do is get the head twist. No, get the wings out. Probably the best thing. Uh, so they stretch like this. Look at that wingspan. It's pretty awesome. And here we go. Be careful with this peg here. It has to be really clipped in properly. Uh, don't be careful because it's fragile. Be, it's just that the wings doesn't hold up. Like it doesn't hold at this angle if this is not pegged in properly. It, it kind of just limps downward. But look at this figure. Like from the under, you know, it looks kind of like shit. But this is good. Oh, he's not. No, he's clipped in. All right. Uh, great alt mode. Honestly, I love the wingspan. Of course, he's not holding like he did in the show. In the show, the rare time you've seen him, he was like 
this um, that the feet were directly under so you didn't have legs you just had this part here and then you two little feet attach at the bottom so I think they did a good choice using the air razor mold but the legs are wrong so you can't really pose him like he did in the show which would have been something like that so if you do that then you see mostly it, it looks like a sitting down robot with a pterodon head well, there you go um love the alt mode the wings are pretty good uh, as i said with my air razor and maximo skywarp review uh, if you see people do stop motion with those wings like lazy eyebrow it's fantastic like you can actually get a good flap uh, from those wings it's pretty great uh the mount that's actually a lot of good teeth and uh, looks good uh the black eye or eyes because he has two great stuff the wings good span the details on the wings you know completely different from the previous mold and it's it's leathery you know you can f feel that those ridges it's really good but he's really 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 red uh, as my wife pointed out it's uh maybe toy hacks will well they don't when they do kingdom uh, beast wars figures uh they do uh toy hacks for uh the robot not the beast mode so but uh, really good uh the way the articulations are set up he's able to stand by himself pretty good uh there's not much articulation the head will rotate 360 up and down the beak the maw will open the wings will flap you can you know articulate the feet pretty good for you know still limited poses but pretty good for this alt mode so i think uh i think is that see there you go if it's not clipped in properly this is what it does it limps downwards so you have to make sure it's pushed in very tightly so i'm guessing that would be a problem for stop motion animator uh, let me just there you go so do some size comparison with maximal sky warp with transformers classics hot rod and with the king of the dinosaurs grimlock with toy hacks decals and fire talks little uh, 3d printed front teeth all right so um one thing i did forget to point out is that you can actually take the gun and put it nowhere there's no holes because of those fins that they give us there's no hole for the gun. So he's one of the rare figure that in beast mode, unless I missed it, uh, that you can peg the weapon. But you know, it kind of makes sense. You don't want to, when you're actually able to put a weapon on a beast mode, it kind of looks weird. Tessar, and we're back from beast mode and uh, we're gonna end with the French word of the day. Rouge, which means red, which uh, of course this guy's the spokesperson for. Thanks for watching, guys. It's a fantastic figure. I'm really happy I was able to secure that set early on, thanks to my buddy Kato, who actually posted the link on his community page, uh, which allowed me to secure this figure. So thanks, Kato. And I'm super happy to have him in my Predacon display. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Also, leave a comment. I love reading those. And remember, nothing in life gives you the right to be an asshole. Take care.